Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to be building a snapshotter component or the skeleton of it. I have talked about it a little bit in my previous videos, but essentially in event source systems, you want some of the, your projections to be built asynchronously and the snapshotter component helps you do that. If you don't understand anything, what I've just said, what we're essentially doing is we're writing something to the database. Then we have a component that is notified by the database that something has been written to it. And then we do some work on the back of that. That component that gets notified is the snapshotter. We're gonna be writing an event to the database. The database will notify the snapshotter. The snapshotter will figure out which projections to build and write them back to the database. Big note, we are going to be working with an actual database. A lot of things that I'm going to show you here are demo quality. Do not use them for productions. I am avoiding a lot of things like the aggregate table, aggregate ID, just for simplicity. I'm trying to show you the idea and how to get started with building a snapshotter, not a production ready event sourced setup. So we are going to be using PostgreSQL. There are going to be link pad scripts. Everything is in the description, all the links that you could possibly want the source code. Go check it out. Support me on Patreon. If you're not, let's go ahead and get started. In the miscellaneous file, we have the connection string and then we have an event channel. Hopefully I don't need to explain the connection string, but the event channel is where we will be doing notifications and you will see how that works in a minute. Then we have an event, which is essentially a harness for these payloads. I have this convenient create method where I just serialize this payload to JSON and then I store it in the database. Do note again, this is where I'm missing the aggregate ID. So I cannot have multiple streams. I only have a single stream of events, which essentially I'm only able to represent a single entity. Finally, at the bottom, I have these two objects for projections, which I want to construct based on these events. Now, the piece that is missing is the one in the middle, the snapshot, the thing that we're going to be building. We're not going to be putting it inside the snapshot or project. We're not going to be running it from program CS, not yet, but we will set up a database. We will interact with it using link path scripts. So if you don't have a PostgreSQL database installed, go ahead and do it again, video in the description, but I already have it installed on my WSL2 instance. So what I first want to do is I want to create a database. I then want to connect to it. We will then create a table for the events and then we'll create a table for the projections. We will now go over to the link path scripts, which have reference to the bin folder of the snapshotter project. So if you do pull the code down, make sure to build it if you are using link path scripts. Otherwise, you can replace it with the console project. You're not going to have the dump method. Spoiler alert. Do not comment about it. Also, I have links sprinkled around to the docs, so I'm going to be navigating to them. So, you know, I'm not pulling this code out of my ass. I don't just know this stuff. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to write something to the database before we can even have a snapshotter, which listens to things. So let's grab ourselves a connection. The connection string comes from the connection class for us. We then want to execute a command. So I'm just going to grab something like this. I'll place it down here and I will sanitize all of these parameters. I will then prepare the query to accept my event parameters of ID, payload and type. I'm going to need a user identifier for this. So I'm just going to quickly dump a new GUID right over here and just assign it as a permanent user ID. I will then create my event from this payload, which will just contain the user ID. And then finally, I will supply the values to the query or the command and I'm just going to run it. So it looks like query is successful. Let's come here. I'm just going to list some relations so I can see it right there. And then I'm just going to select everything from the events. So we have something in the database. Good job. We've just learned how to save stuff into Postgres. What we want to do now is we want to listen to that something being saved. Enter the notify statement. We notify a channel. And then what we have to do is we have to listen. So then we have the listen command. And again, we listen to the channel. That means we have subscribed to the channel for notifications. Again, the kind people at Postgres have already prepared code snippets for you that you can use, which you then basically pad with your error handling and, you know, all the other stuff that you have to account for all that unpredictability of the real world. So let's grab this processing of notifications. Let's put it into the listen script, supplying my connection string. 
I'm then gonna pad everything with a weighting and using. So I'm using asynchronous overloads. This is gonna be critical when we move this into a, the background service of an ASP.NET Core application. I'm also putting this dump here to basically let me know when this looping actually happens. Pay attention to the statement. This connection will essentially be dedicated to listening from a channel identifier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my identifier into here. There it is. And this is the same identifier that I'm gonna be reusing when I wanna notify, right? You can see this channel right here and the payload that we can send with the channel. Do note PostgreSQL documentation comes with examples at the bottom as well. Coming back to the link path script for the notification that we receive, I have this O thing, which is an object and this E thing, which is in PGSQL notifications are, I don't know what they are. I just want to dump them. I want to see what they are, right? I'm going to kick off this process and this is going to start uh, listening. It's essentially running in the background. I'm now heading over to the right side and I'm just going to write another event, right? On the listen side, the notification hasn't been triggered because we're not seeing anything in the output. And that's because we're not notifying anything, right? We're just inserting. If we're just inserting and we're not running the notify SQL statement, nothing is happening. And analogously, nothing ever just happens. It's programming. You have to tell the computer to do something. So if you are using any other provider, Redis, Event Store, whatever, uh, just pay attention. Back in the basic usage link, we have this batching section where you can essentially execute batch SQL commands. Who would have knew? We're gonna grab this sample right here. Instead of just inserting, we're gonna put this batch query right here and make sure that the first thing that we do is we execute our insert query. We can then execute the notify statement. So let's grab this, place this over here, replace the channel with the channel that we want. And then we replace the payload either with the full event or with the payload of the event. I am just going to supply the ID so we can query it on the other side. So this is the channel that I'm notifying. This is the payload that I'm sending, which is just an identifier. And then I'm executing the query. Uh, let's run this again. And now on the listen side, this is what we're going to see. For the object, this seems like the NPG SQL connection. I'm not sure why they would just hide it behind a generic object. Maybe there are different things that are being sent down there sometimes, but not sure what you would do with this connection, to be fair. The more important thing is this E, this event. This is the thing that is going to give us this GUID. If I come back to my terminal here and I will query it, I will just pay attention to this last event that I have inserted. I know these are all duplicates. We are just demoing here, but it's E3C and this is the E3C event that is being sent, right? So we're receiving a notification about an event that we have just written. We're pretty much halfway there. We're writing an event and then we're receiving it. Now what we want to do is we want to find this event, deserialize it, build a projection and write it back. I've stopped the listener while we work on it. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a GUID out of the payload so that we can handle an event in a completely separate function. Again, this ID can get passed down to further asynchronous processes while we receive events and we try to resolve what is this thing. We slowly pass it on and it will get processed, right? So as soon as you're in this separate component, a vast amount of possibilities of the world of data processing opens up here and you're essentially building data pipelines, which is a pretty big, complicated topic on its own. So we're going to open another connection. We will come back to the documentation and we'll grab an example of querying. Place it right over here. Create our query. So we just want a single event where the ID equals. Again, we can place distinct whatever. I know I'm just going to get a single row here. We then extract the type and the payload, which we want to map to an object. Right now, I don't have any smart logic for figuring this out. So let's go ahead and build something super simplish. I'll have a simple payload class where I'm going to parse based on the type. And in the end, I will just return an object. So this is going to look something like this based on the type. I'll just deserialize it to a correct event. Again, no smart reflection or anything like that. This is essentially hard coded solution. Make sure I make it static and build. Back in the link path script, we're just gonna parse the payload and we're gonna dump it. So small incremental steps. Let's see if this is working. I forgot a semicolon here. Let's run this. So it's listening and quickly just write one more event. Here we're gonna see added card and we have added this user. 
So again, stopping the listener, what I want to do now is I want to fetch a projection. If it's not there, I want to create a new one. I'm going to flatten this statement out and put a bunch of spaces on the bottom so I can actually have the code in the middle. I'm going to duplicate the command and I'm going to attempt to select from projections. The identifier is going to be a little bit different. Again, I'm missing the aggregate ID on my events table. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to hard code my user ID here, which is essentially going to be the aggregate ID. So the primary key is a composite of a type of an aggregate and the aggregate ID. So a user can have a card, a user can have a favorites list, a user can have many things and he's going to have many streams with the same aggregate ID but different types. Ultimately what I want to do is grab the payload of for a user where the projection is type card because this is specifically what we're working on and again where you have multiple data pipelines and you have many different events and many different projections you're going to have tons of configurations and reflections kind of whatever you're going to have many things figuring out what needs to be updated, right? Again, simple example, try to understand the idea. I then want to read if something exists and then I can dump it, right? So I have the second command, I have the reader and, you know, I want to see if this record exists. And I quickly want to check if this works or not. Let's go to this read side over here. And I'm just going to remove this middle bit here. Running this basically gives me that nothing exists there. So let's go ahead, come back here. And this is pretty much how this works. If it exists, we use the existing card. If it doesn't exist, we have to create a new card. So we end up with something like this. We either grab an existing card or we create a new one. It's super simple. So again, not boring you with the details. We're essentially checking what event it is. And then we're handling it correctly by mutating the card object. Finally, I want to do an upsert query. So I serialize my new payload. I insert into projections the following values again for the user ID and the type that we've queried. I insert the payload. If we are conflicting on the type ID constraint, which is this primary key constraint in the projections, again, as I explained previously why this is so, you can have many projections for a single user, right? The type and the identifier are a composite key. So if we are conflicting, we just update with the payload and we execute the command finally. Let's run this thing and uh, hope it works. I'm gonna come to the right side and I'm just gonna execute this. On the other side, it looks like I don't actually know how to work with PostgreSQL, so bear with me while I dispose of my commands. So just quickly adding these dispose asyncs for the reader and the commands on all of these that I'm gonna execute. So again, let's just listen to the events again. We'll send this down. I don't output any notification on whether anything has been written or not. So let's check the database directly. So selecting from projections gives me something like this, a card for a user. Let's go ahead and send a couple of more events there. So here we are. Let's go ahead and add some road information. Again, this seems to be received and is it handled here? Yep, so this increased a little bit, but yeah, here we have the phone number and the address. This is zoomed in a little bit, so I'll have to like uh, pop in and out of this, but let's go ahead and add some products. So uh, from the command line, you know, it is gonna look a little bit awkward. So go there, there we can see the one product. I'm gonna go ahead and add table 3000, only one of those, those are quite expensive. Let's run this and quit and reselect. And there's our table 3000. So there you have it, an implementation for a snapshot or in a single transaction. What we can do is write an event with a notification statement that once that is committed to the database, a projector snapshotter will get notified and will build the projection asynchronously based on the data that it receives in the event. This topic does go pretty deep, so there will be a couple of follow-up videos where I show you how to do more things. We're gonna transfer this into a background service. We will handle some distributed scenarios and some basic data pipeline stuff. But this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe. Any questions, leave them in the comment section. Big thank you to my patrons who are already supporting me. If you are enjoying my content, do consider supporting me as well. It really helps a lot. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for Twitch and Discord, etc. As always, have a nice day and hope to see you in my other videos.